This is Dr. Robert Abley shining a spotlight on freedom, which you can also hear on my website, spotlightonfreedom.com. My question today is straightforward. What issues are important enough to fight and die for? Most people would say, for my country. But what is a country? Is it a constitution? Aristotle says yes. But let me add to Aristotle's understanding the notion that there are normative principles that underlie every constitution and are instantiated by that constitution. It is those principles that unite us as a people. Therefore, it is those principles that are worth fighting and dying for. Those principles are easy to see if one reads our Constitution or the Declaration of Independence with an eye to the values that support them. Life, liberty, equality of the people, and the pursuit of happiness are the bedrock values on which we stake our democratic claims. When we drift from these normative dimensions of our common lives, we set democracy aside for whatever form of despotism may come when these values are not lived by all, but particularly are ignored by our leaders. If one wants to understand how these values become a part of the state, one need only understand the primary principle of democracy, the principle of popular sovereignty. This principle states that all governmental power derives from the people. Some thinkers refer to this as the social contract, or as John Locke called it, the social compact. This understanding was the primary principle that influenced the framers of the U.S. Constitution, as James Madison stated it in Federalist Papers No. 10 and 51. When a country actively embraces the values of liberty, equality, and the rights of all people, only then may that country call itself a democracy. Voting rights alone do not make for a democracy. Only a united people, speaking for themselves and for each other, demanding that government represent their interests and not the interests of the elite few, can call themselves democratic. This is what concerns true patriots. So where is the democracy we so love today? Where are the patriots? Democracy and its proper patriotism are found in the voices of those who are putting themselves on the line today to express their discontent and even outrage when the government of the people, by the people, and for the people has failed to live up to its promise of liberty and equality for all. It is in the pens of those who are quick to chastise government for violating the rule of law, international as well as domestic. The voice of democracy is heard in the condemnation of a government which does not respect the rights of the people and which caters instead to the wants of the privileged, but is equally quick to affirm a government whose interests are those of the people at large and not of a privileged subgroup of the people. All of this means for me that I would fight and die for my country under two conditions. First, when those who are tasked with representing my country by supporting and defending our Constitution do in fact, as well as in word, represent the values of a compact with the people, of whom I am one. I would not defend my country when it represents the oppression of a class of haves against a class of have-nots, as is the current economic policy, when it engages in a conflict against a country who has done us no wrong, as in Iraq, when the leaders express open disdain for the dignity of the people and expression of that dignity in the concept of rights, and when that refusal to embrace human dignity takes the form of torture of others, as our government currently does in Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay. This leads me to the second, perhaps more important condition under which I would fight and die for my country, and that is in order to overturn this type of government under which we currently live, which has no interest in the people and in universal rights, and to reinstate the values of democracy, liberty, and equality for all. These are the principles on which we stand as one nation, united. These are the very principles we have seen not only ignored, but rejected and overturned by our government in the last seven years or more. These are the principles for which true patriots are and must be prepared to sacrifice themselves in order to get them back. When government strays from those fundamental democratic values, when those who hold the trust of the people show their refusal to uphold the values they have compacted with us to maintain, then, as John Locke says and Thomas Jefferson echoes in the Declaration of Independence, that government must be abolished and new representatives of the will of the people must be put in their place. These representatives are required to uphold not just the Constitution, but the principles that underlie the Constitution, human dignity, civil rights, the rule of law, and the social compact between the representatives of the people and the people at large, for whom they are doing their bidding. To restore that democratic balance, 
all who love democracy should be willing, in the words of the Declaration of Independence, to place our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Robert Abley, SpotlightOnFreedom.com.